Join me on Air Greenland's A330 Neo from Copenhagen to Kangerlussuaq today, and I'll show you the best seat in the house, what the service is like, plus some really amazing views coming into Greenland. Overall, it's a privilege to be able to fly to such a remote place as this on such a beautiful, quiet new aircraft with all the creature comforts you could really hope for. Greenland for the win. I may be biased, but that's just facts. Anyway, let's get into it. I'm in the mood to go to Greenland. What do you think? Luckily, Right out there is the best possible ride to get to Greenland. Tukak, the A330 800 Neo, which I've flown on once before, but it was during the delivery flight. And I was up in the premium cabin and it wasn't a real Air Greenland experience because it was such a special flight, it was really cool. But now is my chance to fly it as a passenger. Just normal, standard service, no special treatment. I'm in economy this time as a regular passenger, normal flight. It'll be so interesting to see the service. And best of all, I managed to get the best seat in the economy cabin, which I scouted out last time when we were on the delivery flight. I had a lot of time to run around the cabin. You might remember I was doing that with Josh Cahill as well. It was kind of fun. Um, but uh, <laughs> I figured out at that time that the row 12 window seat is really the superior one because you've got that bulkhead space. You can be at the window. You can still get out with someone next to you. And you've got this epic, perfect wing and engine view with that red engine and that A330 Neo wing. Just great. So we're going to check that out. I guess it's about four hours, as I recall, over to uh, Greenland. It's funny, I've never actually flown there completely as a normal passenger. It's always been flight deck or delivery flight. This will be my third time in Greenland, so looking forward to it. Beginning in November this year, not long now, five or six months away, they're going to be flying this A330 straight from Copenhagen to Nuuk because they can, because most people are headed to Nuuk. So of course, once it's possible, they're going to do it, cutting out Kangerlussuaq. It's going to kind of be the end of an era. Uh, and I guess they'll keep Kangerlussuaq around, hopefully as a diversion airport. A lot of Air Greenland pilots have told me that Kangerlussuaq is kind of like a lifeline for them when the weather closes in along the west coast, which happens pretty often, especially in the winter, which is a long season in Greenland. So. Very interesting to see these developments. I'm hoping to also be on that flight when they first fly it into Nuke. It should be a really momentous day and uh, maybe that time in the flight deck if I'm lucky. So let's see. So I did a video about this flight for the Flight Radar 24 channel already. But these days when we have passenger experience videos on that channel, we tend to do them with less editing and commentary, just a bit of info and text and otherwise alongside lots of aviation ambiance. That's because I found that the flight review videos just don't do very well over there. And that's one reason I've launched my channel to be able to do all those flight reviews that don't really have a home over on Flight Radar 24. So this will be the same flight, but with more commentary and more of me on screen. I'll link to the other one here too. I'm really curious to know which approach and style do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. So let's go over the highlights of this product. I've already mentioned the comfortable seat, and that's made exponentially better in this row 12 bulkhead with so much space in front and easy egress into the aisle. You've got a nice high definition screen here with a decent entertainment selection, plenty of choices for the medium haul flights this plane tends to do. High definition camera views are great, though I wish it had the A350 style tail cam. That's just not an option on A330s though, so it is what it is. Any camera is better than no camera. You've got nice Greenlandic designs in the cabin just like on the old A330, which really sets it apart.
The seat color and cabin look and feel is really nice too. They serve a little Nordic style breakfast box, which is adequate. This reminds me of what you'd get on a morning flight in SAS Plus. Keep in mind, this is just economy. Granted, Air Greenland tends to charge pretty high fares for this route, so they can maybe afford to offer a higher level of service. But still, in absolute terms, this is a really nice economy product. And as always, I want to be transparent. This flight was provided by Air Greenland as a way of getting me to the inaugural Nuke Ikaluit flight that I made a video about for Flight Radar 24. It's a fun one, so make sure to check it out. I'll put the link down below. But anyway, yes, my ongoing friendship with Air Greenland, and the fact that I really love them and the country does probably make my review a bit less objective than it might have been, but I think you can see for yourselves. This is a legitimately nice way to fly, and I'd highly recommend it. Actually, I should also clarify something else on that front. I don't get any commissions from Air Greenland for saying that, and neither Flight Radar nor I personally are ever paid for the creation of these videos, and certainly not for this one. If I ever do get paid by a travel company to make a video about them, I will let you know very clearly. Another fantastic flight with Air Greenland. I should have counted up how many I've done now. I reckon it's about a dozen, and that's my third time coming into Kangerlussuaq, I think. Yeah, that's right. Second time on the A330 Neo, first time was on the A330 CO, the old bird that's now been replaced. And what a beautiful way to get here. I mean, four hours, super pleasant, especially, especially in that row 12 seat where you have all that legroom. Anywhere else it would have been a bit more cramped, a bit harder to sort of relax, get in and out, up and down, as I did. So, yeah, fantastic. Thanks for coming along, and uh, now it's time to hop on the little Dash 8 flight down to Nuke, about a 45-minute flight down. Again, done that a few times. It's always a thrill. Too bad it's a bit cloudy, but what can you do? So I think I'm gonna get a bit of lunch before uh, it's time to head down on the Dash 8 to Nuke, because I'm actually starving. The breakfast was tasty, but it was quite small on the, on the plane, so I'm gonna see if I can get some, uh, some real food now. <laughs> 